Welcome to the program one on one on Africa Uncensored. And today we are discussing the Wagala massacre, which happened in the northeastern region of Kenya 33 years ago. I'm joined by Salah Abdi Sheikh, the author of the book The Blood on the Runway, the Wagala Massacre of 1984. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Tell me, where were you at that time? In 1984, I was a young boy uh, looking after goats in uh, the bushes of uh, Wajir County, which was Wajir district then. Uh, uh, I was uh, six years old, as I said. Uh, most of the what happened, I did not actually see it myself. It is uh, uh, whatever I saw was the outcomes. You know, people crying, people running away, and the trauma that followed uh, after you know for so many years, three to four years. And that's where I was in 1984. <laughs> yeah, that's how it was. And uh, what I can remember actually is there was also a drought in 1984. And because of the drought, uh, the livestock died. And, that, and uh, the following year, 1985, we, we left the nomadic lifestyle and we had to come to, to a village. And uh, what I remember is that's when I was taken to school because the goats that I was herding actually died. Yeah. How did you come about to write the book? It was a culmination of events that happened over a period of many years. Uh, having lived with the victims, some of them, uh, the family I was living with, my aunt, her husband had died in, in, the, in, in the massacre. And over the years, you know, the stories were being told to the children and, you know, they we could see how people were. At one point, you know, you, you could go to the playing playground and uh, you are playing with 24 other children and probably you are the only one whose father is, is alive. The rest are orphans from Agala Massacre. So part of that experience is what led to, to the book, and it wasn't the first book. The first book was actually a, a play in the name of, with the title uh, uh, "In the Eyes of, of the Meow," and which I wrote because I wanted to participate in a in a, a playwriting competition uh, organized by the BBC at the time. And I was young. I was a young. Now uh, I left school in 1996, high school, and 97 I was sort of. Uh, you know, free. You remember we used to stay two years out before we joined university. So I wrote the play to try and participate in that play, uh, uh, you know, playwriting competition, but I could not get somebody to type it because typing was, re was, was required. And at the time, you know, computers were very few and typewriters were also uh, sort of... Worse. It was a strange kind of, of, of life then. So we could not, I could not get somebody to type it, so I just put it in, a, in a, my bag and forgot about it. So that's the play I, fa I first published in 2003. And uh, I did more research and uh, we discovered more information and pictures and other, you know, other information that's relating to Wagala Massacre. And in 2005, I started writing uh, in, in, in Blood on the Runway. And we published it in 2007 uh, with the help of some of my friends. And we published around 2,000 copies. And uh, now it's out of print. Actually, we are revising it. Yeah. It's over three decades since the massacre happened. Where are we? At the moment in terms of getting justice for the victims? Uh, in terms of getting justice, I don't think whether we are closer than we were in 1984 because this is sort, sort of a systemic problem. You know, people make promises, people, you know, people get uh, say things, but the system is, is the problem. The system does not allow for compensation, for, you know, proper apology, for, you know, establishment of, of, of memorials, for, you know, for integration of, of, of the victims into society. The system does not allow, the system does not allow us to, to actually do that. So I think we are not closer. But uh, the, what has happened is we have collected a lot of information. We have uh, written books. We have uh, documentaries were made out of this, uh, this massacre. Uh, TJRC had an official report. Now we have an official record of what happened. Uh, that might be a progress towards uh, justice, but are we closer to getting justice? I have my doubts. Uh, in 1992, the then president uh, Moi, he promised that there would be set a fund to compensate the victims, but that never happened. What keeps you going, and do you think the victims will ever get justice? Personally, I'm one of the most pessimistic person in terms of the victims getting justice. I don't see it in my lifetime. Uh, probably after my lifetime. But uh, if you remember, Moy actually wanted to establish a trust fund which uh, will help the victims. But 1992, 1992 was the year of elections. He wanted the votes. At the time, it was the first time he's facing a, you know, a serious challenge. And he promised, promises a few things. 
uh, promotes a few members of that community, uh, you know, does a, a few, you know, things that are, were related to trying to, to appease the victims, but nothing came out of it. Uh, same thing with the time when NAC came, came to power. I remember, I remember one of the, the ministers for, for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, uh, Kiraitu Murungi, uh, promising that they would do something uh, and saying that this was, was even genocide, but then they did nothing, you know. Uh, the TGRC came along, wrote a report. The report, if you read it, is very, you know, it's a, it's a report that can be, can be implemented. It has, you know, it has recommendations that will be, you know, accepted by the victims. But you see nothing has happened for now, after four years. So uh, what keeps us going is the hope that we cannot, we cannot actually, uh, uh, we cannot give up on ourselves. We've had conflicting numbers of those who were killed. Do we have a definite number? And how did the killings happen? It's very hard to actually determine how many people died. But what we know is the government thought it killed 57 people. Uh, we have established that 55, 55 was the number of civil servants who were killed in, in the massacre. 55. So they say 57, they just added two to the number of their, of their own civil servants that they killed. Uh, the number 300 and something, 427 is the number that we know, people that we know, people whose names are available and we know the, you know, the families and we know, and, and we know the three names and all that. Uh, 1,000 is the, over 1,000 is the number that uh, Annalena Tonelli actually said they killed over 1,000 people. So she was there, she was a witness, she collected the bodies. So she must be the most uh, reliable uh, source of, 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 of evidence. So what I can say is if 427 is the number we know, I will say that would be like 10% of the, of the victims. So around 4,000 is the number we should be looking at. Hey, how did they happen? You know, this thing happened over a period of four days. Uh, they collected everyone from all over the, the, the district, which was a very large district, very expansive you know, place. Uh, people even collected from the neighboring district. Uh, some people I know are collected from Gariza, Gariza district, which is a, a place called Modogashe. Uh, and some people are collected from uh, Moyale. So, uh, and then whatever happened was people were kept in a very large uh, air strip for over four days. And they were not given food, they were not given water. And I remember at this period of time, now, we are in February now, this period of, of, of time is the hottest period in the year. The temperatures there reach around 40 degrees. Outside, maybe even 45 degrees. You could easily die, you know, of, of thirst outside. So some people died of thirst. Some people were tortured to death. Some people were shot in the back when, when there was a stampede. You know, the last day when everybody saw that now they will not survive this, there was a stampede and uh, the military, you know, uh, shot at them and they killed. Many of them were, 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 were killed, you know, they were shot at the back. And, you know, the deaths followed after because people were injured. Uh, continued, continued dying of their injuries over many years. People died of injuries that after even 10 years. Eh? So that uh, we cannot say how many people died because people, some people died on the ground there, at, in the airstrip. Other people were killed outside the airstrip. Other people were shot at the back when they're running away. Others died of their injuries and nobody actually knows where they died and where they were buried. And you know, we don't know. We don't know anything about them. So the numbers will never be resolved. But what can happen is. Uh, knowing the, the large number of people involved, if there is any uh, sort of justice that's to be achieved, we should not focus on the number, you know, we should just focus on the event itself, that people were involved, that innocent people died, that people who are villagers, essentially people who live in a town, were collected and, and killed. And uh, if compensation is to be given, we, we, we look at the, uh, we, we, the, the burden of proof is on the government, it's not on the victims, because the, the victims are victims. The government is the one that uh, has to prove that they didn't kill so and so, of which I don't think whether they will be will be able to, to do that. So if there is any compensation or any any justice to be to be achieved, we should we should not put the burden on on the victims proving themselves that they are they're victims. We should put the burden on the government to prove that they didn't kill these people. And in your view, is there willingness on the part of government to look into past injustices? This country has a tendency to establish commissions, uh, committees, uh, you know, tribunals people who write very beautiful reports. Uh, somebody, was, somebody was saying there are about 63 or so reports which have been written by on different kind of issues in this country and none of them has ever been implemented. If you read the TGRC report, it deals with many issues. It deals with historical injustice and it deals with the issue of land, which is a very 
contentious issue in this country, and which will probably cause us, if, if there is any any uh, civil war or any other uh, problems that will come to this country, will come not because of anything else, not because of even historical injustices, it will come because of land. So having the report itself, yeah, it's beautiful. It's we have a record of our history. We know that we, we didn't live in the paradise that everybody everybody else thinks. We live in a very, you know, we had a very bad history. We we, we were sort of uh, at war. We had a low-level conflict in this country going on, which uh, many of us thought that many many of this country people in this country don't know that that was happening. But now, where do we take this report? What has happened is, like every other report, like the Nungu report, like uh, the report on Oko, like any, every other report, we shelved it and it's on the shelf and it is there, anybody can read it, but nobody is willing, even the parliament is not willing to look at the TJRC report because the problem is it's a mirror and everyone will be seen there. Considering what you've said, will you continue fighting? I think I cannot give up because uh, giving up you know, now nobody's even considering me. So if I give up, I'm just giving up and nobody knows that I gave up. So I don't want to give up uh, because I have nothing to give up for. You know, if, uh, whom am I giving up on? Because nobody's taking on me. People are indifferent to what we are doing. They're indifferent to all the writing we are doing, all the criticizing we are doing, they are indifferent. They have closed their ears completely to anything that concerns the history of this country. So I don't want to give up. I have the hope that one, if, if we keep the... If we keep fighting, if we keep uh, the the history of the country alive, if we if we if we we have records of these events, you know, records of these events, at worst is we prevent such events, such that kind of incidents from happening again by having the record, by 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 telling people that this thing happened on this date at this time, and these are the people responsible. We will we will prevent similar incidents from happening again. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome.